the International Court of Justice in The Hague in Netherlands. She is expected to defend Myanmar's military action against uh, well, uh, the Rohingya Muslims and the accusations of genocide. The first three days of hearings will focus on military clearance operations in 2017 against the Rohingya Muslims who are in minority uh, in Myanmar. The operation forced 700,000 people to flee across the border to neighboring Bangladesh. Myanmar is a Buddhist majority country that considers the Rohingya Muslims to be illegal immigrants and denies them citizenship. Now let's take a look at the accusations closely. Firstly, the military in Myanmar launched operations against Rohingya Muslims in the Rakhine state. They are accused of widespread and systematic clearance operations against them. Reports suggest that military uh, in Myanmar intended to destroy Rohingya Muslims as a group. The military is also accused of mass murders and rapes. In 2017, one million Rohingya Muslims lived in the Rakhine state. And Myanmar considers, uh, as we said, Rohingyas as illegal immigrants. Now, Aung San Suu Kyi was once considered a human rights champion. In fact, in 1991, she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. But over the years, she faced international backlash over the Rohingya issue. Aung San Suu Kyi will not be addressing the International Court of Justice until Wednesday. She is expected to argue that her country's military operations were a legitimate counter-terrorism response. The case uh, reached the International Court of Justice after Gambia accused Myanmar of breaching the 1948 Genocide Convention enacted following the Holocaust. Gambia is uh, a predominantly Muslim West African country. The 57-member Organization of Islamic Cooperation and team of international lawyers also supported Gambia's move. Meanwhile, thousands of people uh, rallied in Yangon to show their support for Aung San Suu Kyi. On the other hand, Rohingya Muslims uh, well, are praying for justice as Myanmar goes to try. And we on uh, correspondent Nina Maria is now joining us live from Brussels for the very latest on this. Nina, thanks for talking to us this evening. Now, what's the significance of this hearing and what have we heard in court today? Well, there are um, a couple of things about this uh, proceeding and this hearing which are very significant. First of all, the International Court of Justice, as you know, is the UN's uh, judicial body. Myanmar is a member of the United Nations, but has so far ignored uh, previous UN reports into mass atrocities uh, against the Rohingya. Um, secondly, uh, it has some uh, very significant players involved. Canada has taken a leading role and in fact, uh, attorneys on both sides, both on the Gambian side, uh, which represents 57 Muslim majority countries involved in this case as part of the uh, organization of Islamic cooperation, but also on Myanmar's side. Uh, they are represented by leading Canadian lawyers. Canada, if you remember, stripped Aung San Suu Kyi of her citizenship over her silence. Um, um, linked to uh, the army's actions against uh, the Rohingya. Uh, so it's significant on that level, but also it is the first time since the 90s that a genocide case has come uh, before the court. Uh, so definitely this hearing is in the international spotlight. And we heard from uh, the judges, uh, well, the judges were installed this morning, uh, but we also heard details of the prosecution's case uh, led by Gambia. Gambia's a legal team setting out in, in very brutal and vivid detail uh, the allegations and the nature of the allegations against um, Myanmar, uh, saying Myanmar was guilty of genocide against its own people uh, and also calling for the ongoing genocide uh, mm -hmm. to stop uh, before irreparable uh, damage and harm is caused or further irreparable d damage and harm is caused. Right, and Nina, of course, many would ask then, why is Aung San Suu Kyi appearing in person for this hearing? And what sort of outcome do we expect from this? Well, I mean, it's a good question. And in fact, when uh, it was first learned that Aung San Suu Kyi herself would be appearing at court and defending her country, 
uh, you know, many were in, in a great deal of shock. I mean, the answer to that question is that she didn't have to uh, appear in court herself, certainly. Um, uh, precedent suggests that usually it's the ministers of justice or attorneys uh, who argue these sorts of cases and she is Myanmar's civilian leader and she has come in person. She went into court this morning just ahead of the hearing refusing to or declining to speak to reporters. We're expecting her to address the hearing uh, first thing on Wednesday morning. Um, there is of course um, some suggestion that this has to do with the domestic politi politics and uh, the upcoming November election. Uh, her supporters back in Myanmar see her very much as mother Aung San Suu Kyi, protector of the nation. It may be that there's a personal element in this, that she it's a part of an effort to, to nation build, which was something that she inherited from her father. Um, but she does have a, not, a lot to lose. Her international reputation has already been badly tarnished uh, by her uh, apparent alliance with the army, the army that kept her under house arrest for at least 18 months. Um, so there is, I think, a sense that she really needs to distance herself uh, from the army uh, to give her arguments any credibility at all. She's expected to say uh, that these allegations are exaggerated, uh, which already, I think, raises questions about her legitimacy uh, and certainly claim to defending human rights. Absolutely, Neil. Thanks very much indeed for joining us with the latest there. We will be watching out for that statement that Aung San Suu Kyi will be making on Wednesday. Uh, India time. Thanks for that. We'll be looking forward to speaking to you again.